we have to be honest and transparent, is that there are countless lines of poetry in which Arab people considered blackness as a whole and a black person or any color of skin to be a defect and to be ugly and to be looked down upon. That's a fact. That's a fact. No matter how many uh, feathers are ruffled or how many people get their, uh, as they say, quote unquote, excuse my French, my expression, their knickers in a twist, whoever gets mad and upset, it's, it's a fact. You read the Arabic poetry and you find many people talking about blackness and how it's an aib. Even in the books of fiqh, you'll find this. Some of the great imams, you'll find them making statements that if a man married a woman and he didn't know what she looked like and she turned out to have dark skin, the marriage contract could be null and void just because he has dark skin. All right? So there are many different statements in this well-known established fact in Arab culture that they look down upon different people. And from the people that they look down upon were Africans, maybe who darker skin than they have. Then you're going to have fatawa that say, in, in the tradition that say, the, the dowry of a black woman mm. is less because she's less desirable. Ooh, and a, and a, a, ah, and, in traditional wait, books. Wait, 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 let, me, let, me, let me continue. Please. And <laughs> a black woman doesn't need a wali because to, to, she can't get married, basically. Because oh. she finds it difficult to get married. So make, to make it easy on the easy. That, that, that is yeah. found where? That's social. That's and and up. <laughs> nah, nah, yeah, 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 please. <laughs> ah, the social Let the friends like the black woman doesn't have to wear niqab. Oh, yeah, not wearing niqab as well. That is found where? The yeah, traditional, yeah, yeah, traditional yeah, text. Yeah, which which ones? Oh, right? Shafi madhab. Some ah. in the Maliki school as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Ambly madhab. Ah. Ah. So, but that's a reflection of the society. At the so the sickness is existing. Right? Right? Someone is from the like that. It's a reflection of the society that they were in and the failures that they, unfortunately, these individuals probably failed to no but the thing is what's scary is that it just proves it's just coming back full circle how people can use religion and some texts in religion mm. and justify their racism mm. and they won't call racist no. most of the time those type of hadiths of course they are probably all those hadiths that are that uh, offensive about any particular group usually turn out to be apocryphal it'd be, it'd be fabricated spurious types of hadiths as a matter of fact in, in the famous Josiah famous scholar um, um, student of Ibn Taymiyyah he said, all, all the hadiths about blacks are just fabricated. <laughs> he said, any hadith you find that, uh, that is disparaging of black people, they're just all fabricated. You know, but again, you'll find scholars who might say, well, oh, well, you know, it's good enough. Right? They feel like, okay, they're using their methods to authenticate a particular report. And SubhanAllah, I remember I was like 19, man, in Cairo, and, um, and we were uh, reading... Uh, and one of my friends, he said, you know, some of these texts you read, it'll, it'll like, it's not good that you read it until, you know, you have um, a very firm grasp of uh, all of the texts, basically, as well as like strong iman. I said, why? He said, you're going to read the Bible of uh, Nikah. He said, and it's going to make you hate fickle. And I why? said, why is that? He said, well, you know, you would read stuff like um, in, in, in regards to the, the chapter on the suitability of marriage, you know, it's, it's preferred, you know, to, you know, black women, you know, you know, they, they're like the lowest on what's desirable. Um, above the black women are the, um, the Kiptis, like the, the Egyptian Coptics, and, and above them are the, the the Israeli women, the, the, uh, the Israelite women, and above them are like the Arab women, meaning like the, 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 the Levantine Arab women. And so they actually, some of these books categorize what woman was more suitable, basically based upon her skin color. And this is in thick books. That is so symbolically violent. And so yes. how, how does one who is of this lower echelon that they placed blackness in, how is the Muslim who is trying to develop their scholarship and, and their faith, you know, I, I, because I think it's very demoralizing. How do they come to terms when there's all of this text that is so aggressive and violent towards their skin color, which is an ayat of Allah. So why is it that you're putting these negative connotations on an ayat of Allah? And then how does one continue? Like you said, how do you want to continue your scholarship if you go in and it's just like all of this that exists? Not that it doesn't exist in other um, 
religions because if you go into uh, a, a lot of Christian exegesis texts, and uh, they're just as bad. But uh, um, in a Muslim context, how do you forge ahead? A lot of the fellowship that you respect is has had these colorist. I won't say racist. I'll just say colorist tendencies. No. I wanted to, again, similar to what Sister Rashida said about celebrating our achievements. Mm -hmm. And this is something that's been documented in Muslim history dating back to the 9th century. We had scholars such as Al-Jahid, who was an Afro-Arab scholar, yeah. who wrote about the virtues and achievements of black people. Yeah. Similarly, you had 30, um, in the 13th century, Ibn al Jawzi, who was from Iraq, who also wrote about the virtues of black people. And the reason why he wrote his book was because it was anti-black racism within the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. Now, as Muslims, we like to kind of blame the West or blame non-Muslims and yes. say that this isn't really an issue that we are affected we have, by, yeah. but this has been an issue of racism and colorism that's predated in, um, interaction with, mm -hmm. with the Western world. So, And don't reject my work or my book just because I'm black. Because the best people with Allah are the people who have the most taqwa. And so this is speaking about the anti-blackness that was prevalent in the Ummah then and is still prevalent now. And this is an attitude as well that is something that is still existing till today. People can look at a scholar and they'll be like, okay, this is a scholar, he has a book, da, da, da. where's he from? If you don't say Syria or Morocco or Yemen, people will be looking at you for, oh, he's from Nigeria. Eee. Oh, okay, oh, he's from Senegal. Ah, oh, okay. And they kind of overlook the book or they overlook the text, not knowing the depth of the scholarship that is hidden in those places. And so he said this, and in his context, in his time, if you study a lot of the classical books from the Arab world, there are a lot of anti-black sentiments in them. Even if you look at books like the Muqaddimah by Ibn Khaldun, there's racist statements in those books, there's anti-black statements. And so he's going against the popular narrative in the world. You had, you know, for example, a lot of scholars or people who called themselves scholars promoting things like the myth of Ham, the myth that black people are people that have been cursed by Allah, that's why they have their color, or promoting all of these ideas that black people are deficient in intellect as compared to other races. All of these racial stereotypes you do see in a lot of classical Arabic books, and Sheikh Ahmed Bamba was somebody that not only had access to these books and probably saw those statements, but also had racist interactions with people because he traveled, not only did he study within Senegal, but he also went to Mauritania to study. And he did face racism when he traveled to the Arabs to study with them in Mauritania because a lot of them looked at Senegalese people as people who were new to Islam, who weren't native Arabic speakers, and so they looked down on them. And so he's saying, just because of the fact that I'm not Arab and I'm black doesn't mean that I'm less of a scholar or doesn't mean that my books are less valuable as scholars in the Arab world.